Mr. Malibu, and here we are at the Malibu Lumberyard with famous artist Lee McCloskey. <laughs> Lee, what inspired you to uh, do this uh, expose here at the Lumberyard? Well, it was an invitation from Seda who said, would you like to participate? And I thought, yes, of course I would. It's a community uh, involvement, and I am a big believer that the conversation that is between all of us is essential. And so basically my art has come from my private experience where I've had discussion groups and individuals that, as I say, lead us toward a more enthusiastic sense of who and what we are as human, and maybe if we ask more interesting questions, we'll cultivate more interesting art forms, and the art forms that come through me really come from asking questions, and as I like to say, using the tools of creation to explore the nature of creation. After all, being human is to be an art form. <laughs> I always thought it would be fascinating for an artist as well known as you who've gotten huge publicity with the TED video and everything. It would be fascinating if, if some of your paintings could start to appear in feature films. Well, that's from your lips to God's ears, you know. I'm game. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you, um, do you, have you ever had a vision that all your combined artworks are an interconnected <laughs> grand expression or are they all multifaceted sides of the diamond that uh, well, that's a, that's a, it's an interesting question, and I would almost uh, have to say at this point, someone should visit my website, <laughs> leemcloskey.com, and to explore the hieroglyph of the human soul, because everything that we see here is actually part of a much larger painted 3D environment that began on 9/11 when the towers came down, but it began in my home. And why I like to point that out is that, a bit like Dorothy saying, I have to find home, I think we humans are looking for a way to make our personal experience, our unique journey as human, uniquely relevant. And that's why the painted library, that's what the hieroglyph is in, shows us that we are the living library. And all libraries reveal that it's not one book or one conversation, that to be human is such a fascinating conversation that when you actually grapple with it, you realize it's about, uh, for, you know, beyond anything you can comprehend. So therefore, you might as well enjoy it more. And why not see what happens if you dive into its mystery rather than trying to prove a point? <laughs> so I've been very fortunate to actually be in your private home which um, uh, I, you have a specific title for the upper area, which you, uh, in my opinion, is is on par with the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> you know, it's you turned it into an entire artwork itself. Well, it's a labor of love. Uh -huh. Yes. And yeah. Have you yeah. thought about taking that to a whole another level, like doing yeah. an entire building or something of that nature? You know, I would love to experiment always with environment. Because my question is always about the theater of the psyche, meaning as we take all of these possibilities and we compose them differently in different environments, uh, that they will tell a different story. And I think that's important to our humanity, that we start to understand that we're not incomplete, we're not less or more, we're holographic. So each of us wear the robes of this holographic DNA, this tr truth that we're not born into time, but into creation. And that's why I feel that, that everything here is a type of, of working template. And Joseph Campbell said it best. He said, in the mythic, he said, you can break down the mythic continuously, but it remains ever whole. And I thought that's really a metaphor of being human. You know, we are broken down into all these different parts, all these different stories, but essentially as we return home, we'll realize that we left the cave with a great question of who are we then? We're finally returning home to the painted environment, meaning our first language which says, as you explore me now, don't have an agenda, but once again awaken with a sense of wonder and we'll have a true relationship, and you know what? It'll be much more fun. <laughs> so that's, that's. <laughs> Ultimately, that this is a communication form. Yes. What would be your brightest vision? What would you want to communicate to as many people as you could? The truth that it is not proving something we think we know, but our willingness to ask questions about what we don't know that stimulate our creative curiosity, and that a sense of enthusiasm is of far greater value than any construct of logic or reason, and to dive in 
because you can, simply because it's possible. We've been taught, well, what are the, you know, where are you going to sell this? What is your audience? What is this? And that kills the creative spirit. The creative spirit says, I just want a relationship, darling. I just want you to say, maybe, just maybe, we can explore this together and see what comes from it. That's really what my, my artwork is really a labor of love. I didn't expect to be showing it in a gallery or for it to become what it was. It was really a way that, that I thought by embodying the sense that if we ask questions and don't go along with the old assumptions but realize the questions we ask will change our assumptions, then we create the story that, so pick up the pen or brush pick up the pad, don't worry whether it looks good or whether it looks bad, put that critic aside and don't share it with your friends that critique you. Remember, it's like a garden, they're little seedlings, so hide your work until you reach a point where you can share it with others or those that you share it with, make sure they're the ones that nurture you and then you'll feel a sense of, ah yes, I'll keep continuing on. But don't paint because you think you ought to do it for one reason or another, do it because of true relationship, a sense of falling in love. So you know what's interesting, um, this may seem a little off topic, but um, I recently uh, rewrote some uh, daily affirmations that uh, had their origins in a, in a very famous book of uh, daily affirmations, and one of the uh, statements in there is that I will now look at the unknown as my greatest friend. Yes, yes, and yes. Isn't there something about just loving the unknown and, yeah. and celebrating it and being excited about the fact that we don't know? Yes, absolutely. And also to realize that we, like life, we go through different periods of development. And we reach a certain point where we've developed uh, the sense of these are shared codes and laws and rules. I'm not going to go crazy. I understand that they're there. I have to attend those. But then I can, once again, let myself step into that mystery. To me, that's a bit like the musician or the actor that says that every time you step on stage, every time you pick up the instrument, every time you dance, you're stepping into a relationship with music, with, with the playwright, with, with, with the sense of, of story. And that's where I feel so many of our energies really want to mentor us. It says, so see where we go together. You know, almost like puberty. It's not something we have to figure out. It's not, we all know enough. It's like saying, quit studying me and start exploring me. Love is more interesting than critique. <laughs> so that's... You know, what's interesting also is that, let's say a person loves this piece of artwork and they want to put it in their living room, you know, and is it something that is enjoyed more and more and more every time you see it and you see something different every time you see it? Or have you thought about the idea of maybe having a rotation and, it, and you could just have like a series that tells a, a, a connected message and you could just put up a different one each week and you're just taken into a message? Well, I think, I think that's always, uh, as I say, just a, a different variation on a theme. I think both are uh, quite possible. Uh, what I like is that with any of these uh, entities, really, these these uh, creations, they they end up having so many different uh, relationships that they're always different, and that's what I like because I always think good conversation scintillates. It doesn't stay fixed for long. It always steps to the next thing, to the next thing, and it's the the enthusiasm that comes from the exploration rather than it, you know, getting to the end and I've made my point and won the argument. <laughs> Enough of that. I'm exhausted with that. <laughs> well, thank you so much and good thank luck. You. What's the next step? What's the next big thing on the horizon? Now? Well, just we'll just see. Uh, I just want to share this with Malibu and uh, we'll take it to the next step when the next step comes. But in the meantime, it's a pleasure. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Lee McCloskey. Well, I, I really just want to share this with Malibu, my hometown. I grew up, I'm a Malibu boy, so this is to share it with the locals. And I like to think, well, I'll take the next step when the next step comes. But in the meantime, come on down and take a look. And I know you'll enjoy it. So. Awesome, thank you. Thank you.